Welcome to the Customers Not Paying on Time, Five Methods to Get Invoices Paid Faster webinar. You might notice your hosts today look quite different to the hosts that were on your sign up page. Um, my name is Amaya Woods, Senior Marketing Manager here at Chaser. I'll be covering for Chrissy today and taking you through the webinar. Chrissy unfortunately couldn't be here today, um, but she has sent me all of her notes and everything that she was planning to share. Uh, so I'll be able to pass that advice on to you. I'm being joined by my colleague, Kevin, today. Uh, hi, good morning, everyone. Yes, I am not Charlotte Woods. Uh, I don't, uh, I would usually wear my lipstick and high heels at the weekend. So yes, you've got my uh, dour Scottish voice this morning. I am the head of global sales here at Chaser. Uh, really looking forward to sharing some of uh, my advice and our advice and knowledge uh, with you all today. Thanks, Kevin. Just to take you guys through a little bit of housekeeping before we get going, we are going to email you a link to the webinar recording so you can always have this advice handy. And Kevin and I will be running a quick Q&A session at the end in case you have any questions about the methods shared or about the demo of Chaser that we're going to do at the end. So to go through what we'll cover today, I'll firstly take you through the global experience of late payments by businesses today. Next, we'll go through why now is really the time to take action on these late payments. Then Kevin and I are going to share the top five methods you can use to get invoices paid faster. And lastly, as we mentioned, we'll take you through a Q&A at the end. So let's set the scene by looking at the prevalence of late payments over time. Back in 2019, Xero and PayPal did a study into SME late payments, and they found that 48% of all invoices issued actually get paid late, so after their due date. When Barclays researched this same topic in 2021, they found that 58% of SMEs are usually paid late, so that number had increased. Today, in 2022, recent research conducted by us here at Chaser found that 87% of businesses are typically paid after their invoice due date. So the pattern here and what this suggests is that late payments might actually be becoming more prevalent over time, and today it looks like they're more prevalent than ever before. So next slide, please, Kevin. These late payments can seriously impact your business's growth. If you don't know when that cash is coming in, it can prevent you from accurately forecasting. That can stop you making crucial new hires. And poor cash flow can lead to a reliance on costly methods like debt and equity financing. Research by QuickBooks and Intuit found that 89% of business leaders believe late payments are stopping their business from growing. So not only do these late payments restrict growth by placing that strain on your cash flow, but in the case of smaller businesses, they can frequently, unfortunately, lead to business failures. The Federation for Small Businesses found that here in the UK, 50,000 small businesses face bankruptcy every year due to late payments and the strains that they place on cash flow. So why take action now? Well, we've seen that the challenges faced by businesses in response to late payments are only heightened by challenging economic conditions. During the COVID-19 pandemic and the ensuing recession, 40% of businesses actually saw worsening late payments. So more prevalence of late payments and later payment dates. Corporate insolvencies doubled during COVID and the recession. And now with the current threat of a global recession, it is more important than ever for you to take action and adopt practical solutions to reduce late payments and their impact on your business. But the good news is there are simple methods you can implement that have been proven to reduce late payments. So without further ado, Kevin and I are going to share five methods to get your invoices paid faster. So Kevin, I'll hand over to you now for our first method. Thanks, Amaya, and sorry, everyone, for our oversensitive mouse there uh, at the very start. Um, so 
Yes, the method you use uh, to ask your customers for payment can drastically impact the payment times uh, that you have. So certain channels of communication can be better suited to certain situations in your payment chasing process. So the first one we're going to uh, tackle is emails. Um, email is the most commonly used method for following up on late payments, and it's used by 93.8% of businesses. So, you know, it's by far the most common uh, use of chasing payments. Emails are the best channel for providing detail and documents. I'm sure we've all been there where we have insurance documents attached to emails, etc. And there are no strict word limits or, or um, and all, like I say, all relevant documentation can easily be attached to your customers and uh, their ability to make the payments. We do recommend beginning your invoice follow-up process with a politely worded email reminder, perhaps starting before that invoice is actually due. However, depending on your payment contact, sometimes emails can get overlooked. If you haven't received a response or payment after three emails, we recommend using additional channels. Also, there could be complex or sensitive issues that you have to resolve around a payment or your customer relationship uh, is on the line uh, over unsettled debt and, and relationship management is, is key here. There are better, if that is the case, there are better suited uh, means for contacting your customer. And another avenue you may look at is SMS. Now, a quick question to everyone that's that's on the call here, and, and let's try and break up my voice a, a little bit. But just a quick question to everyone. How many apps have you actually used this morning? So it's, what, 10 past 10 uh, on a Wednesday morning. And I just want you to sort of have a, have a sort of, an awareness of how many apps you've used this morning. Um, myself, I, I had a quick count before coming on. I've, I've used about 15 already this morning. The first one that I used is my alarm. And that's really telling because you're reaching for your phone before you're even conscious. And I dare say everyone on the call this morning, I'm sure you're all giving me 100% attention, but I almost guarantee a lot of people are checking their phone while they're here. And that's why SMS is so important. If your phone is never far away from you and it's in part of our daily lifestyle. So SMS is a, is a huge part of chasing these late payments. However, saying that, text messages are only used by around 19% of businesses in their credit control process. You might be using text messages for marketing or even confirming appointments, that kind of thing, but you don't use them for your credit control process. However, businesses who use both email and SMS payment reminders increase their chance of getting paid before or within a week of their invoice due date by 56%. And that is a huge impact on your business and also your own well-being, really, your own mental uh, well-being. SMS payment reminders increase the chance of payment uh, by helping you reach customers quickly about their payments. Like I say, their phones are usually in their hand. And they have an open rate of around 98%, meaning payment reminders sent via text are more likely to get noticed and result in your invoice getting paid. But by supplementing your email payment reminders with SMS, you can ensure that customers have all their relevant documentation in their email, but you can reach out to, out to them instantly uh, to get that payment done via their phone. Oh, sorry. Now, the third uh, communication channel, uh, of course, is uh, good old fashioned. You know, when I'm talking about how many apps have you used today and I've used 10, 15, the one thing that I've not used my phone for is actually speaking to anyone. But speaking to people is so important uh, as, as well, especially when you have those disputes or sensitive matters that we're talking about. Now, whether that's the amount that you've asked for, you know, it could be a very high value amount or the timing of this payment as well. And when you ask for a payment through your uh, through a phone call, you're able to you know gauge your your customer's reaction and make adjustments uh, necessary. Sometimes you don't get that context if it's a, a, a an email back or whatever. So we recommend uh, phoning your customers before sending a letter of demand or pursuing debt collections. You know you want to maintain that relationship. That, you, that customer might continue to be your customer after all. And it's best to make the customers aware of your next steps over the phone and your reasons for doing so, and to give them a chance to resolve this before taking more serious uh, action. Now, we know these phone calls can sometimes be uncomfortable, especially when your customer's pushing back on, on making that payment and perhaps you don't like the conflict of, of there. But figuring out the right thing to say in the moment can be challenging. So we've created a guide of 10 pre-made call scripts, which we'll share with you after this webinar to try and help you handle these conversations a little bit easier. Now, I, I've got to stress to you, th these 
calls aren't catch-ups or informal, and it's important that you keep control of these calls, which the scripts will help you to do. So treat these calls almost like an interview or a presentation, uh, a little bit like me and Amaya done this morning. You know, we, we were last minute um, replacements in these calls, but, but we had a little rehearsal. We read uh, our notes, we looked over, over the um, presentation deck. So it's important that you take the, these scripts, make them your own, Take the time to prepare your calls before picking up the phone. Perhaps practice and try and take the emotion out of these calls because this is a business call and it, and it matters. So use these scripts as a, as a framework and uh, turn them into your own sort of thing and own delivery. But it's really important that you practice that and take them out. Now, there is no right or wrong method to ask the customers to pay their invoices. But there will often be one that may be more appropriate than the others, whether that be email, text or phone call. And the research has shown that supplementing traditional methods like email reminders or phone calls with SMS payments can significantly increase your chances of getting paid quicker. And that's what it's all about. Thanks, Kevin. It's really interesting to hear about that, actually, and how ultimately there's not just one best best method for getting that payment from customers it's actually using those methods in tandem can be what's delivered the best results for people um but our next method that you can see on screen for getting paid faster is actually offering flexibility so when your customers are struggling to pay you or if you have a large value invoice Offering them a payment instalment plan can mean you receive partial payment or full payment faster than if you asked for that total amount just in one go. And offering that extra flexibility can help build positive relationships between you and your customers because you're showing that you're flexible and you're adapting to their cash flow needs. Lastly, it's going to give your business that reassurance that your upfront costs can be covered depending on how you structure your payment plans. We'd, we'd see payment plans as particularly helpful in those instances when your invoice is for a large sum of money or when the client has previously been late in paying their invoices due to cash flow issues on their end. But I will say you need to be careful which customers you're giving payment plans to. Credit checking can be a good way to see which customers can be trusted to pay back their installments on time. It's also really important to consider what your business can afford. So payment plans might represent a really good opportunity to support your customers, but it is important that you understand yeah. what payment plans will mean for your own business's cash flow. So if you're applying payment plans to those really large value invoices or across the board to all of your customers, we do recommend forecasting that out and making sure that your business can cover your own costs if you do implement payment plans. So in order for payment plan installments to work, it's really important that you set out clear terms and conditions and get your customer to sign a contract beforehand. And that should cover when payments will begin. So for example, on your contract start date, how much each installment is going to be, how often payments will be made, the total amount of payments required and any applicable late fees or interest charges if you plan to use them, should those installments be paid late. So up on screen, Kevin shared a template for payment plan structure that you can use with customers who might be experiencing cash flow strains. So you could ask for 50% of the total invoice value up front, and within 30 days, request an additional 25%, bringing you to 75% of the total. Then after 60 days, request an additional 25% of the invoice total. So that would bring you to 100%. Another way you can do this is if you're selling yearly contracts to your customers and they typically pay late, consider if your business could afford to offer installment plans that maybe let the customer pay at the beginning of each quarter or split their payment across the first three months of the year. I know from the marketing side, we do um, this with a lot of our suppliers. Another idea is requesting the first installment upfront. So this can be used to ensure that your initial costs of covering the service are accounted for. 
and then your customer can pay you in smaller, easier to manage installments throughout the course of the year. So this means you're not stuck waiting for a lump sum that's going to drastically impact your cash flow when it does come in. I'll hand over to Kevin now, who's going to take you through our third method. Yeah, thanks, Amaya. And one of my favourite methods of almost everything in life is the carrot and stick. Uh, anyone that's got children, uh, especially uh, just now, uh, at Christmas time, I use this almost on an hourly basis. So the, the carrot is please behave, the stick is Santa will not come if you do not behave. So I use the carrot and stick in all aspects of life, which which is great. Um, but it, it's a, quite a powerful tool for you to use Um in terms of business, because if your customers aren't paying on time, you know, a further method is that you can implement this carrot stick uh, approach. And you, and you probably realize that these things exist, but, but not take um, full of, like, attention to it. So this rewards good payment behavior by rewarding it with the likes of early payment discounts, but it also discourages late payments by using fees and penalties uh, as such. So let's go into this a, a little bit detail and uh, I'll hold my hand up. Very recently, I took advantage of the carrot and stick method. I drove uh, my car up a bus lane in Manchester because anyone that's been to Manchester, the road system is shocking. Uh, and I didn't know where I was going. And two weeks later, I got a fine for driving up the, the bus lane. But Lo and behold, if you pay it within 30 days, you, you get a 50% discount. And believe me, that motivated me to do that. So if your business can afford it, you can um, offer early payment discounts because they are an effective method uh, to incentivize early payment from customers. Now, when it comes to calculating your early payment discount, there are two primary options for you to do that, static or dynamic discounting. So static discount, um, a bit like my fine, uh, you know, you offer a set discount for early payment, regardless of how quick the invoice is paid. So for example, if you have a 30 day payment terms, you might offer a 10% discount if they pay before the invoice is due. Dynamic discounting um, uh, takes into account how quickly the invoice is paid, offering a larger discount the sooner it's paid. Now, this can encourage customers to pay quickly as the discount gets larger the sooner they pay. So again, for example, for a, a super high volume invoice, you might offer a 0.5% discount if it's paid within the first two weeks, and then a 0.25% discount if it's paid one week before the due date. Now, don't think, you know, I say that the start about this you know, if your business can afford it, but also think about the knock-on impacts. Perhaps you're using a business overdraft or a credit card to cover your cash flow. Then actually, if people pay you quicker, you're you're paying less interest. So, you know, you can balance this out. It's not just a case of giving people discount. You have a, a wider view of, of your business finances there. But when using this tool strategically, early payment discounts can have a large positive impact on your business. Not only does it mean you get your invoice paid quicker, which is great, it will benefit your customer because you're offering them a discount and a reward for good payment behavior uh, ultimately. And the cost associated with early payment discount can also be offset by late payment penalties if you decide to implement both the carrot and stick thing, which we'll touch on in a second. Just to interrupt, sorry, Kevin, and add a bit of color to this, uh, early payment discounts is something we actually use at Chaser ourselves. So we offer annual plans to our customers. So essentially, that means they pay for their 12 months of Chaser up front, and we get the benefit of the kind of assured cash flow of their subscription for the full year. But from their end, they're also getting the benefit of a discounted rate for paying that full amount up front. Yeah, totally. And, and uh, uh, going back to your first point, really, Maya, it's about that flexibility. It works for some and it work, doesn't work for others. But yeah, absolutely. Um, now, late payment fees as well. Uh, again, this this is a stick. This is, you know, um, pay, me, pay me now or else. Uh, this is the Santa will not bring presents uh, on, on Christmas Day. So if you are... Uh, you know, if you are considering implementing late payment fees, I think it's really, really important to notify your clients in advance um, because you you want to be clear about this and you just don't want to spring uh, fees on them. Again, go back to my kids. I've given them the warning to behave. If they wake up on Christmas Day and there's no presents, um, I, my life is not worth living. So it's really important to set expectations at the very start to avoid uh, that relationship being you know ruined uh, later on this will also help you avoid any disputes and confusion further down the line and how much you 
uh, can charge in late payment fees will really depend on uh, the country in which you um, operate this business in as well. So you can use our late payment fee calculator uh, with an adjustable annual interest rate to calculate late fees that you can charge your companies. And the statutory interest that you can charge on late payment fees in the UK is actually 8% plus the Bank of England base rate for the business to business transaction. So that's why it's important to, to look into this, but also be upfront uh, to your customer because not many people knew that. I certainly didn't know that uh, before uh, joining Chaser. So it's important that you, that you bring that. And then late payment fees on overdue invoices should be used to cover your costs and time incurred on chasing the payments. And it's in a really, really effective way to discourage and reduce late payments. Nobody wants a fee. It's a good point, Kevin, what you mentioned about if you're taking out a loan to supplement your cash flow whilst you're waiting for a late payment, actually passing that cost into the customer in the form of a late payment fee means that you're not then suffering so much as a result of that yeah. late payment. Yeah, and and take the finance away from it. I think what a lot of business owners fail to do is look at how much money their own time is worth uh, as well. Mm -hmm. You know, if yeah. you're on the, the average credit control uh, person's on £16.50 an hour, and if they have to chase invoices more than someone else, then that that's time to, and money to your business. So yes, yeah. it's, it's, it, it is the loan, it's the credit, but it's also how valuable your time is as well. Absolutely. And the, the next point, which ties nicely into the time cost that late payments can present, is we recommend following up with all of your invoices every month. So this might sound like a baseline, quite an obvious thing to do, um, but you would be really surprised at just how many businesses aren't able to do this or don't have the resources to do this. Taking a proactive approach is going to go a huge way to reducing late payments. So we found in the 2022 late payment report that businesses who follow up with 90% or more of their invoices each month are the most likely to be paid within a week of their invoice due date. So if you can go to the next slide, Kevin, there's some stats on there. Thank you. Um, so we've recently did some analysis actually within the Chaser software, and we found the average number of follow ups it takes to get an invoice paid is 2.6 payment reminders. So sending just one follow up to customers for their invoice won't quite cut it. It is really important to be proactive and persistent when you're trying to reduce those late payments. Instead of contacting your customer only once their payment becomes late, notify customers when their payment deadline is approaching and make sure you're following up periodically. Even before that invoice is due, email your customer with all the information necessary for payment, ask them to confirm they've received the invoice and ask them upfront if they're aware of anything that might delay payment. If your invoice does become overdue, start chasing. It goes without saying, but ensure you always remain professional and polite. As Kevin's mentioned, don't bring emotion into it because it is a, a business conversation. Attach everything your customer needs to pay as soon as your reminder hits their inbox and continue to send reminders and phone them if necessary until that payment has been made. Now, following up with every invoice every month might sound difficult to implement, but there are tools available like Chaser that can let you take care of this automatically. So those of you who are already using Chaser will be pleased to hear this. The 2022 late payments report found that businesses using accounts receivables automation are actually three times more likely to be paid before their invoice due date compared to those businesses who aren't using a software. So I'll now hand you back to Kevin for our fifth and final method for faster payments. Uh, thanks, Amaya. Yep, and the, our fifth uh, and final tip is to make it easier and faster for customers to pay you. So did you know uh, that 60% of businesses only use one method to collect payment from the customer? And that method is bank transfers. Um, now from customers to suppliers, 
all businesses have a preferred way of paying. Of course they do. But if you can facilitate multiple payment methods and make it easier for customers, you're more likely to receive prompt payments. Now it's Christmas time again. I'm sure we're all buying stuff online, but I just find it so much easier if I'm buying something here at my desk and I've not got my bank card available. When I've got the option of using PayPal or um, open banking or you know something else, Apple Pay, then actually I make that trans I, I make that purchase right away. Some of it's probably complete rubbish that I buy as a result, but you, you get my point. You know, having those options makes makes me pay things uh, much quicker. So I'm now going to show you how you can make uh, it easier and faster to customers uh, to pay you by using the payment portal um, in Chaser. And uh, to do that, I'm going to jump into the, the Chaser account uh, just now. Now, Amaya, I'm going to ask you if you can see my uh, chaser account yes all good excellent so and in, in, in addition to to bank transfers like i say we, we recommend using a payment portal provider like chaser that facilitates uh, multiple payment options now a payment portal helps you get paid faster by offering multiple payment options to suit your customer needs all in one location i think that's the the, the vital part now it'll save your team to Time, um, as, as we've discussed, time is money. Uh, as all the relevant documentation, invoices, statements, they're all readily available for your customer to download and see in one place. They're not searching in emails. They're not coming back to you, claiming that they don't have it, that kind of thing. And it's all in one dedicated payment portal. Now, your customers will get full visibility over their accounts uh, payable and previously paid invoices. This, again, like I've just said, it will eliminate confusion about what has been paid, what hasn't been paid, and again, ensuring that no invoices will take them by surprise. It will improve your communi uh, customer communications. It will make you look super professional and, and know that uh, what you're doing, and you can easily add notes for customers to see in their portal. On top of that, you can add contact details, um, you can brand it up, that kind of thing. And lastly, you'll have the option to get more predictable payments from your customers by offering direct debit uh, options in the payment portal. And like I say, this is just trying to make this process as easy, as smooth as possible to do. So I'm just going to show you very quickly what it looks like. We'll go into the receivables area of Chaser and I'll pick uh, Dean Cole because uh, uh, Dean's one of our colleagues who I've spoke to already this morning. So this is our demo account. So is it super accurate? Uh, to how you th think uh, life is probably not but it tells our story really nicely so you can see here dean uh, norris and we've got the payment portal link here so if i click on dean and this is unique to dean my customer and every individual customer has their own payment portal again and i'll click into dean here and again how super easy and smooth and professional does this look here is all of dean's outstanding invoices you can see he's got uh, one for uh, 59 days overdue 43 days overdue actually still got one for 22 days that are not due until then. Um, so he can see this all here. He can download them all. Uh, he can choose what invoices that he might want to pay. So let's tick these six that are, are overdue. And you'll see on the right-hand side, you've got the options here. He can pay by card. He can pay and set up a direct debit. And you can see the bank transfer information here. And uh, lo and behold, uh, you've got Amaya's contact details here if you want to uh, give Amaya fantastic feedback about her presentation skills today, if, should you want to. Um, but as you can see, uh, really nice and easy and, and slick for your customer, and it's all unique to them. They're going. How do we set that up in Chaser? I'll just go back into the uh, Chaser account here. Let's uh, take a look how you can integrate this into your communications. Remember, we said you have numerous communication channels and it's important to utilize these as much as you can. So again, in the manage area of um, Chaser, you have the payment portal. And this is where you can uh, set the payment portal up via um, your bank um transfer information, so you put your sort code and account number, but we also integrate with Stripe, which uh, allows you to take card payments uh, via Chaser and also direct debit as well. And again, this is making it faster and easier for your customer to pay you. Going to the templates area now, 
And this is where you set up the templates that go to your uh, customers. I'll just pick this first one uh, as of ease. What you then do is use these placeholders on the right hand side. So you can see here, payment portal link that is already added to this invoice. And that means when they get this email, they will see a payment portal link. So if we just go to preview, you'll see their unique link on the email. And again, up at the top here, you've got SMS. And let's look at the text messages. And you've got the payment portal link uh, right at the bottom here. And if I go to preview, you'll see the text message that they get. And this is a direct link. They can click on their phone and they can go ahead and pay that. So hopefully nice and straightforward. It doesn't take too long for you to set up. And as soon as you've done it once, it's constantly there for all your customers, which is fantastic. And I believe over to Amaya as soon as I get back onto the slide deck. Thanks, Kevin. It's really good to see actually how those two features, the kind of payment gateway and the SMS tie together in practice. So I think, as you've said, the, your phone's the first thing you look at in a given day. So you're not really going to miss it if you've got a text with a link to pay right there. There's kind of no excuses from the customer's end at that point, is there? No, and I'll, I'll, I've just looked at my own SMSs and actually the only texts I've got are all from businesses telling me to, you, you're, you've got an appointment coming up, your car's due its MOT, actually we've got 10, 15% discount at Domino's this weekend, why are we not using it for credit control? Yeah, exactly. Um, so I guess just a, a wrap up and a summary of the key methods that we've covered. So firstly, adopt multiple channels to follow up on payments, as we've just spoken about SMS is certainly an, an underutilized one and the data backs up that this is really helping businesses to reduce late payments. Um, but as Kevin shared, each channel has its own strengths and weaknesses, but using a combination of those channels has been proven to increase payment speeds. Secondly, offer flexibility. So for customers who are consistently struggling to pay, offering payment installment plans to help you cover upfront costs and gain clarity on when payments will be made can really help to support your customers and also get better visibility over your cash flow. Uh, as Kevin explained with his lovely Christmas present analogies, <laughs> using the carrot and stick methods or the, <clears throat> I don't know how you would rephrase this in Christmas terms, Santa's not coming, you're going to get gifts method. The, the naughty or nice list. <laughs> naughty or nice list method. <laughs> with your customers, uh, you can encourage good behavior or earlier payments from your customers by rewarding early payers with discounts and discourage late payers by implementing fees and penalties. Our fourth method was to follow up with all your invoices every month. So as we went through taking that proactive approach and following up with 90% or more of your invoices per month is proven to reduce late payments. <clears throat> and then last but not least, of course, make it easier and faster for customers to pay you. If you can facilitate multiple payment methods like Kevin was talking about and make it easy for customers to pay you, late payments will reduce. So next we're going to move into a Q&A. I hope you found the five methods useful. If you do have any questions, please feel free to drop them in the chat box. I can see we've had a couple through already and we'll spend the next five minutes or so just answering those. Yeah, we'll, we'll give you a couple of minutes. Please use it, like Amaya said, please use the, the, the Q&A. Um, I, I think I just want to end on one absolute cheesy note as well, because again, this is something that me and Amaya suffer from this morning. Um, we, uh, we, we, we've obviously had some sickness at, at Chaser today and it, it got me thinking, you know, if if there was an automated way of running a webinar, it would have kicked in during sickness. And, you know, never, uh, sickness shouldn't stop your credit control process. Holiday should never could stop your credit control process. So actually having these tools and automating, you know, your business still goes 365 days a year and, and it can't 
you know, can't wait for anyone. So it's really important getting your business into the rhythm of getting paid and things never missing out. That encourages the good behavior. So yeah, software doesn't get sick. So uh, you'll still <laughs> need someone to do it, but but ultimately uh, you, you're not chained or you're not um, you're not held hostage by sickness or holiday, uh, certainly. Um, so we've, we've got um, a couple of questions that, that come in. We'll probably answer them first before people uh, sort of start dropping off. But which direct debit system do you, um, you use or how do we manage the direct debit mandate? So that's part of our integration with Stripe. Uh, so we, we partner with Stripe to take our, our car payments and set up a direct debit mandate. So it's through Stripe just now. Now, I'll hold my hand up uh, just now or or I'll be completely truthful with, with everyone here. We are looking at other payment providers uh, next year or it is on our product roadmap. Uh, so we, we hope to have a, at least one other option for you uh, pretty early next year. But at the minute, it, it's Stripe. Um, a lot of our customers use it and are, are extremely satisfied with it. Uh, Stripe are, are one of the top payment providers in, in all of fintech software, really. It's very simple to use and set up, and, and we've got great success uh, from it uh, as well. We, we actually, again, use it internally at Chaser. Um, how does Chaser's additional collection service work? Um, so our ch ch our collection service is is um, I, I want to say again it's a little bit on our late payment sort of advice. Is it's very dependent on the uh, region that you're in. So at the minute we probably just focus on on the UK. We we can do a, uh, some loose uh, collection service to uh, America, um, but we, we focus it predominantly on, on the UK. And how you do that, you can do it on an invoice by invoice uh, area. What we'll do for, for this attendee, we'll, we'll send more relevant information uh, to you about that because we, we don't offer it to everyone and every value of invoice because, um, you know, at the, at the end of the day, uh, collection is the last resort that we want to get to. We want to make sure that we get you paid quicker and, and easier. But we'll reach out to, to you as an individual and give you a, a little bit more information. Just there. to add to that answer as well, Kevin, this person's an anonymous attendee, so I can't tell if it's a customer or not. Um, but if you do have a Chaser account, you can go over to the collections tab within the Chaser software. And if there are particular problem invoices or accounts that you are thinking of escalating to Chaser's collection service, just tick on them and click escalate to collections. Nothing will happen, but you get to view a instant quote um, for your no win, no fee cost should that invoice be collected by us. So you can see any upfront costs right away. Oh, yeah. Kevin's showing you on screen there. Um, and until you click confirm, none of that will go to our collection service. Um, so it's quite easy for you to look at the quote there. Um, obviously, no obligation if we don't get it collected. And just one thing to note is that we really champion um, working towards an agreeable solution for you and your customers uh, when you are using that collection service. I think focus groups before we launched the collection service were that businesses are often very hesitant to use debt collections because of the reputation they have of being aggressive um, and chasers really trying to buck that trend um, we, our collections team are in-house. Uh, we work with them every day. They're a friendly bunch. Um, they're very good at what they do, but the aim is to get you that invoice paid without compromising your customer relationships and keeping keeping your business with a, a positive reputation as well. Um, Kevin, another question for you. This should be a very quick one. But is Chaser only for zero users? Uh, no, uh, not at all. Um, zero uh, are, you know, um, certainly in the UK by by far the, the most popular um, cloud accounting uh, software that, that, that's used. But no, we, we have users that use zero, uh, QuickBooks, Sage, Free Agent, my old employers, uh, FreshBooks. Uh, and if you don't have uh, a, a cloud accounting software, then by all means, speak to me or speak to my team about our offering uh, of, of CSV uploads, which we it's a little, little technical, but it still works. We, we 
our biggest client at, at Chaser uh, certainly uses CSV for thousands and thousands of invoices on a, on a monthly basis. So we, we do have options for, for all businesses. I think, again, I'll caveat all of that. We're, we're in the process of releasing uh, our open API technology as well early next year, which will hopefully fill uh, the gap from a technology point of view as well. But uh, it, it's not uncommon. We, you know, Not everyone uses cloud accounting. Your business can be quite complicated, but we do have options to fit all um, businesses. Uh, that wasn't the short answer that you were looking for, Amaya. <laughs> <laughs> no, no worries at all. I mean, there, there are lots of integrations and there is a lot we can do. So um, there's a lot to say on that topic. And, and I think that's going to be a real area of growth for us next year as well. Um, I've got another question from an anonymous attendee here. So there is a date section to note when a payment should come in. However, there's, there is an automation to start chasing again if this payment has not come in by that date, as opposed to doing this manually. Customer of Chaser. So I believe there is an option to pause chasing until... Um, within Chaser in the receivables section. Um, I'm going to be able to figure out who this anonymous attendee is after Zoom because it will have the data next to your name. So I'm going to investigate that with our support team and just make sure that option is definitely there and send you some instructions on how to use it. But I believe there is a pause chasing until option, which once you have that date from your customer, about when the payment should come in, you should be able to pause chasing until then and it will automatically resume rather than you having to go in and do that manually. So thank you for that question. I'll be in touch to confirm for sure that that option is there. Uh, Kevin, another yep. question for you on the payment portal. Um, it's come through from a QuickBooks Online user. So can I use the payment portal with our QuickBooks Online? Uh, yes, you certainly can. Yeah, absolutely. Quick answer. <laughs> yeah, and, and again, talking about flexibility uh, as well uh, and giving other options, I think with uh, certainly with QuickBooks and, and Xero, uh, there is the option in Chaser to attach the original invoice uh, as well to our chases and if you've got a payment link on that original invoice that will also be pulled through when when we are we are chasing it as well so again it's all about that flexibility but yes the the payment portal uh is available for quickbooks yep absolutely um there's another question here. Can Chaser do phone calls? Uh and, and that's really interesting uh from, from our point of view. So um the, the answer to that is yes. So uh, on top of the software, um, Chaser also offers offers um, full outsourced credit control services. So um, we have a, a very talented and very knowledgeable and very experienced credit control team in-house at Chaser. Uh, they're absolutely superb. And if you feel that your debt or days or you're not getting paid uh, quick enough or, or actually you just want someone to kind of do that work for you, uh, then our uh, outsourced credit control service could be a, a solution for you where we will um, set up Chaser, we will um, make sure that it's optimized fully to, to get the greatest results, but then we'll also take on the burden of making the phone calls, making the emails on your behalf. Now, we will work very, very closely with you in terms of tone of voice, how you want to speak to certain customers, etc., and make it seem that it is from you, not from Chaser. So, yes, uh, can we do the phone calls? Absolutely. Uh, and my next sort of um, recommendation is to, again, speak to me or speak to our team or send us a support ticket uh, asking for further information. We'll set up a, a, a call with our credit controllers to, to find out what your current situation is like, is your bookkeeping up to date, what's your debt or days, that kind of thing, and put a plan in place with you that, that that's relevant for your business. So uh, short answer to can Chaser do the phone calls? Yes, uh, it is part of our uh, outsourced credit control service that we offer. Certainly, and I think that outsourced credit control came as a result of of customers like you asking can Chaser do phone calls because I guess it's it's the natural next step and sometimes you do need that person to step in and if you're struggling for the resources internally 
um, that is something we can do for as many or as few hours per week as you need. Um, Kevin, I think I'll take this one as our last question now, just yeah. so we don't go over time. Um, but somebody's asked, how do I set up the payment portal in my Chaser account? Um, so it's extremely quick to set up the payment portal in your Chaser. You will already have access to the payment portal in Chaser. You just need to add bank details for bank transfers uh, so people can make bank transfers to you. Um, you can do that within Chaser by clicking manage and then going to the payment portal. So within there, you can add all your banking details. And next, if you want to use Stripe for instant payments and direct debits, you need to integrate Stripe to your account. That takes about four minutes to complete. And lastly, the all important branding, uh, which Kevin mentioned in his demo, you can update your branding on the customization page to make sure the payment portal reflects oh. your company's logos. So customers aren't confused when they go in there and they know they're definitely paying your business's invoices. Um, so thank you for the questions. There are one or two that we didn't get time to address, but we'll address those in our follow up emails. We will be sending the resources and um, the recording that we went through today. But thank you, everyone, for tuning in and the great questions. I hope you found the methods that Kevin and I shared useful and we will be in touch shortly. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Amaya.